everyone. Welcome to Bethel. If you're here with us in-house or if you're watching online, you're welcome, and we're so glad that you are with us. Uh, I just want to start by thanking all of our volunteers for, with uh, Love Atlantic. Uh, we, it was a great success this year. This last week, we went out uh, and delivered flyers, and then we went out and picked up groceries, and then I delivered those on Thursday to the food bank. And Bethel Assembly, you took part. We, and we had 505 pounds of groceries <laughs> delivered, thank you, Linda, to the food bank. And the food bank said, please, please tell your congregation, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is what holds us over until Christmas. So thank you for everyone that brought in and, and that uh, helped set up and put things in boxes and went out with us and, and picked up groceries. Thank you so much. You made it possible. Now, there are still totes outside, and I'm going to leave those out until Thanksgiving. So uh, you can look at them. Uh, there's a harvest house. There's the hands up, uh, hand out, or hands up uh, ministry. And then there's the uh, school breakfast program. So uh, please stop by and look and see what you can do and how you can donate to those things. Uh, our October calendars are out. They're at the info desk. Please stop in, uh, pick them up, and have a look at what's going on. Uh, we had a work bee yesterday for the men, and it was very successful. So we thank the men that came and worked and uh, provided and helped out. Uh, so there's, it's a bit of a quiet week, but just have a look at your calendars and get ready because October is going to be a busy month. We have more exciting news. Florence is a great Grammy. <laughs> and she has details, but I know his name is Russell. He was born at 7.01 a.m. And Mandy is doing well. Baby is doing well. And I just hope Zach is doing well. <laughs> but we are very, very excited to have Russell in, come into this congregation. Another miracle. It's so wonderful to have babies come in. So uh, Joanne grabbed me on the way when I was scrambling around here. And she said, uh, re remind people, if you are able to make a meal, please contact her. Gra just grab her and say, listen, I'll make a meal and help them, up, help them out for about a week or so. Bethel likes to get behind our, our sick and our people that are in need, and it's so important that we, that we just stand behind them and just provide them with a lunch that, as they adjust to baby period, and it's going to take them a while to adjust. But anyway, we, we thank you, and uh, we're, going to have, we're going to go into worship, and let's, let's open with a word of prayer. Uh, Lord, we just come before you, and we thank you. We give you honor, we give you praise, we give you glory. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together. We thank you for those that are watching by online that can't be here this morning. And we just pray that your Holy Spirit would begin to move in this house this morning, that you would have your will and have your way, and that you would change hearts, that you would soften hearts, that you would heal hearts this morning. Lord, we just lay down whatever's happened in this past week, our business and our anger, our frustrations or whatever, we lay it down right now as we come to worship you. We just give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Florence sent me a message the other day. She said, I, I've got three praise reports. So Dawn already gave one away. So Florence, come on up. You share everything that you've got to bless the Lord for. She wasn't sure if she could come all the way up. Could you come all the way up? Come on. Okay, you hold it. Linda does everything I tell her. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> First, let's let her give a praise report for Dale. 
Dale had his um, oncology appointment last week and he got a good report. The white cells have gone up a little bit, but there is nothing to worry about, not to concern ourselves and that continue what we're doing. God is on the throne. That's Dale, and then there's Shirley. She um, has waited so long for that hip that she got in to have it x-rayed last Tuesday. Uh, someone got on the ball with the doctor, and she made another, surgeon, another surgeon's appointment, but she lost the one she had for over a year or whatever. And um, uh, uh, what's October 8th. October 8th is a phone call and with possibly a, a, sur a surgical date. And so we're hoping and praying that it'll be this month of October. So that's certainly a praise report because she's waited so long and suffered forever. And we thank you, Lord, for that. And then there's me. <laughs> I don't know how many knew that my cancer was ovarian cancer in 2010. And uh, my, I brought my, I brought my um, uh, CAT scan right with me um, so that I can uh, answer a few of the things, the good things, the findings. Uh, comparison is made with previous exam date, May 6, 24. Previous, um, with ovarian cancer, it can uh, move around. I had nodules in my lungs. Uh, Previous nodule identified within the left upper lobe is no longer apparent. Uh, <laughs> no pleural effusion is noted. That's fluid buildup in space between the lung and the chest wall. Uh, the ground glass density noted previously within the right lower lobe is no longer apparent. And that ground glass density is... Uh, no abnormal finding that shows up on a CAT scan in the lungs as a result of several diseases. These growths darken the CAT scan, showing areas where the lung structure is denser than the tissue around it. That's what ground density means. And um, let me see now. No new nodule is identified. Lungs are otherwise free of consolidation. Uh, when the normal uh, air fluid spaces of the lung are filled with the product of disease. So no, no consolidation. <laughs> no enlarging lymph nodes are identified. No pericardial effusion is present. And that's fluid around the heart, chest wall, uh, none there. Liver is free of focal abnormalities. Spleen is unremarkable. Pancreas is free of significant abnormality. Right and left adrenal glands are unremarkable. Right kidney has been removed in 2004. Left kidney is free of focal abnormalities. And no ascesis. Bone abnormalities on a CAT scan, such as tumors, none. Destructive process is demonstrated within the chest, abdomen, or pelvis. Uh, page two. <laughs> uh, resolution of previously noted nodule within the right lower lobe and left lower lobe. No evidence of progressive, I can't say the word, met metastatic disease the spread of cancer cells from the place where they first form to another part of the body. So, no evidence of progression. So, <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Stand to our feet. Praise him. Praise him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise Thank him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise him. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. know, the you, whole Lord. time that Florence you, has Lord. faced cancer, I have you, never, Lord. ever heard a complaining word or a negative word. In fact, we didn't even know about it. 
It was just her and Jesus. And they, she stood firm in faith and trust in him. And he came through. <laughs> Hallelujah. Totally. Praise you, Lord. You can trust the Lord, whatever you're facing. You stand on his word, on his promise. He's faithful. And he'll continue to work. Continue to work. Thank you, Lord. We've Thank been you. saying all Thank along you. that he is a God. There is none like him in all the Thank earth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, and Lord. And I sometimes we come into the house and we we wonder, well, I wonder what the service is going to do today. But when you've got people that are coming in with praise reports like this, we ought to give the Lord the highest praise, the Hallelujah. best praise that we possibly can. Hallelujah. Give. Hallelujah. For he is worthy Hallelujah. to be praised. Thank you, Lord. I remember at my home, we had a foot washing ceremony with Pastor, and I washed Pastor's feet. And I remember afterwards, Pastor asked me, now what do you want from the Lord, Florence? And I thought for a minute and I said, healing. <laughs> and that was about a year ago, maybe or so. Yeah. Yeah. So how can I not sing, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. And I will sing of the goodness of God. And, and just a short, quick little funny thing when my sister Mary was over and Elner was with me, we were in the Lighthouse bookstore and I saw a garden flag and I got them to get it down for me. It was up high, it was a cardinal and, I, and on it was what I wanted. And I said, okay girls, should I sing this? And so they said, no, no. So I started singing in the store and it was then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. <laughs> yes. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Florence. So I will sing even if they don't want me to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can someone help Florence down here, please? All right. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Raise your voices.
give praise to the Lord. I'm having a hard time seeing my notes here. I still got tears in my eyes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Makes you want to shout. Makes you want to cry. <laughs> he is good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar. The sun
hallelujah here do you know why we shout hallelujah <laughs> and this talks about it so let's sing it again and, it, and, and if you can't shout you can clap you can just give your praise to the Lord raise it to him today shout to the Lord shout to the Lord on the earth let us see in song service we stand for a long time so if, if you want to be seated during this song but then I'm going to have you stand later on but if you can be seated if you want just continue to worship him he is so worthy he is so worthy we fix your, our eyes on you right now Jesus because this is who you are Isn't he? 
stand in his presence. Just stand in your presence.
just the instruments. Hallelujah. this time we're going to run a video that was sent from our international office. Is Tomorrow is the celebration of truth and reconciliation and we uh, thought that we would um, show this video in, in uh, respect to that. A seasoned pastor was once asked by a new Christian, when did you get saved? The pastor thoughtfully quipped, this morning. Although overly simplistic, the response was meant to reflect the reality that our relationship with Jesus is not simply measured in one static moment of confession, but upon an ongoing healthy reliance on Christ. In a similar manner, as followers of Jesus, our relationships with one another are not meant to be moments siloed in the past, but are to be lived out together today with an expectation for the future. September 30th may be recognized as National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, but as followers of Christ, we are to be fully aware that every day is a day for the truth of Christ and the ministry of reconciliation. To reconcile is not just a lofty ideal or a distant goal. It's a concept that's deeply embedded in the Creator Himself. Biblically, it's a core theme woven throughout the Scriptures and central to the teachings of Jesus Christ. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 and 19, reconciliation is portrayed not as just a divine act, but a responsibility entrusted to all of us. It's about restoring relationships, healing divisions, and extending grace. But how does this timeless concept translate into our daily lives? It means actively seeking to understand and heal the wounds within our communities. It requires us to listen, to learn, and to act with intention. Reconciliation is not a one-time symbolic gesture. It's an ongoing process. It involves daily choices, the choice to listen with empathy, to speak with respect, and to act with integrity. 
And so as we reflect upon National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, let us give consideration how we all might live this out. Let's engage in conversations that foster understanding. We can be involved and support initiatives like the James Kalapa Indigenous Leadership Fund or the Meal Wakotuan Journey, which is a church-to-church -church partnership initiative. At the very least, let's do life together and be people who foster unity and who live out our shared values with intention and compassion. Reconciliation is both a spiritual and a practical journey. It's a call to action that invites us to be agents of healing and hope. May we all strive to make truth and reconciliation a living reality in our lives every day. We pray that in Jesus' name that you would help those that are part of this ongoing process. You would give them that wisdom that is pure and peaceable and gentle, easily to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit. We ask, Lord, that you would help them to know, to come to know you as creator Lord of Lords, King of Kings, help us as we all demonstrate your love like you demonstrated your love to us in the name of Jesus. Father, we also pray for Miriam as she goes with the kids that you would, uh, well, Lord, that you would help them as they open their hearts to receive you would open their eyes so that they will see your love. You would open their ears so that they will hear your love. And then they will open their hearts so that they will that they will turn to you at a young age and be healed. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, turn to your neighbor and say, good to see you. Praise the Lord. I am not going to take a whole lot of time to um, get into the message this morning. I think that there is much to be done today. And uh, as you know, the, when, before we left on vacation, we were dealing with the subject about praying uh, the scripture or scriptural praying, if you will. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to 3, it says, Faith is the confidence. How many have confidence that God hears you? Ooh, praise the Lord. Wow, 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 wow. Praise the Lord. That is so big. You need to have confidence because faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Things can look a certain way. You know, in this world, they can look a certain way. But when you have a relationship with the Father, He gives you insight. And I'll tell you something. He will also, many times, give you the words to say as it is almost like you're speaking back to Him what He spoke to you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, right now you're pretty quiet. It's not going to be that way in a little bit. I'm just warning you right now. Praise the Lord. True faith, those in the days gone by, people in days of old earned a good reputation 
By faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And what we see now did not come from anything that can be seen. Whew, praise the Lord. I can hear it, Lord. They're beginning to get it. Many are saying amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. We look to so much that is seen that it's hard for us to address the unseen. What we see now did not come from anything that can be seen. Romans 10, chapter, uh, Romans 10, verse 16, 17. Not everyone welcomes the good news. For Isaiah, the prophet, said, Lord, who has believed our message? And then it says, so faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. Faith comes. Turn to your neighbor and say to them, faith comes. You know what? If you're not sitting around close by anybody, then you turn around and talk to them. You can even point your finger. Just like pastor, faith comes. You can look at people across the aisles. Faith comes. I'll tell you what also comes. Fear. Fear also comes. If you are fearful, perfect love removes fear. You cannot remove fear by feeding it. Listen. Listen. If you feed fear, you walk in fear, and then you conform to fear, and you seem to be molded by fear. Faith comes by hearing, and that is hearing the good news about Jesus. If you feed faith, if you walk in faith, faith will conform you and transform you and mold you. Hallelujah. The way to hear the Word of God, one way to hear the Word of God is to pray the Word of God. Hallelujah. Some people just read the Word of God as part of devotion. You know, and that's good. I'm not making light of that. Scriptures, you know, they used to tell me when I was little, read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, 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 and you'll grow, 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 and you'll grow. Oh, where did that word, that, how did that sound come up from? Grow! Because God wants you to grow. He doesn't want you to stay the same as you were when you first came to Jesus. You know, one way to help improve the quality of your praying is to model prayer after mature followers of Jesus like the Apostle Paul. We're going to look at some today. In fact, we uh, had a few weeks ago, we had some, uh, a sheet with several prayers, all the prayers of Paul actually, and uh, honestly, I think we only gave out about 10 copies. And uh, I'm not sure if you forgot to pick up a copy. I don't know. But I'll tell you, it's my desire that you grow in your prayer life. Prayer is not just reserved for elite prayer warriors. I remember sharing, uh, you know, that praying scripture does not require special materials. We shared that God's desire is for everyone to be forgiven and that everyone learns how to forgive. And you need to learn how to forgive 
those who have offended you, and that seems to open up a way for receiving answers to your prayer. The Bible says if we don't forgive, neither will our Heavenly Father forgive. That bites. It is God's desire that no one perish, that all come to have everlasting life. It is a good practice for every, any, everyone that has a Bible to have a desire to connect with God. You are not just reading for the sake of reading. You are reading to connect with God. Some like to read the scripture quietly. Some just like to read without really... The Bible says faith cometh by hearing. So, if that is true, which I believe it is, why not read it out loud? Hallelujah. Seems simple enough, doesn't it? Hallelujah. Well, I read a portion of Scripture in 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 41. It says, Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people, Israel, comes from a far country for your name's sake, for they shall hear of your great name and your mighty hand, and your outstretched arm. When he comes, this is talking about the foreigner, when he comes and prays toward this house, hear in heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you. <coughs> Does that excite you? Because we think sometimes prayer is just good for, for the Jew. It's good for the Jew. And it's good for the Gentile. It's good for anyone, anywhere. To do according to or all that the foreigner calls to you. In order that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you. As do your people Israel. And that they may know that this house that I have built is called by your name. If your people go out to battle against their enemy, by whatever way you shall send them, and they pray to the Lord toward the city and you ha that, that you have chosen, and the house that I have built for your name, then hear in heaven their prayer and their plea and, their, and maintain their cause. If they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you are angry with them, and give them to the, over to the enemy, so that they are carried away captive to the land of the enemy, far off or near. Yet if they, re, if they turn their heart in the land to which they have been carried captive, and repent and plead with you in the land of their captors, saying... We have sinned and acted perversely and wickedly. If they repent with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies who have carried them captive and pray to you toward their land which you gave their fathers, the city that you have chosen, and the house that I have built to your name. In Isaiah 56, verse, verse 4, I'm reading out of the uh, ESV. For thus says the Lord, to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath, who choose the things that please me, and hold fast my covenant, I will give in my house and within my walls a, mo a monument and a name better than the sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And the foreigners who join them who, who join themselves to the Lord to minister to Him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be His servants. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain 
and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted at my, offer, at my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Whew. Wow. Now in Matthew chapter 21, verse 12, Jesus entered the temple. He had just rode into Jerusalem. And he entered the temple. The very first thing he does is he enters the temple and he began to drive out all the people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. He knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of, of the, those selling doves. And he said to them, the scripture, the scripture declare, my temple will be called a house of prayer and you have turned it into a den of thieves. Look at what happens next. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. You make room for God. There are miracles and things done by the hand of the Lord, by the mighty power of God that are done in the midst of the people, that they can't help themselves, but be, well, they want their needs met. They see that person over there. That's why testimonies are important. Thank you, Florence, for your testimony. People begin to hear that. And I'll tell you, faith begins to rise up. Why is that? Because faith comes by hearing. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So, uh, when, when I read Mark chapter 11, verse 15, it says, when they arrived back in Jerusalem, it just tells the story all over again. Jesus entered the, the temple and began to drive out people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. That's what was going on. He knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. He stopped everyone from using the temple as a marketplace. He said to them, Scripture, the Scripture declares my temple shall be called a house of prayer for what that lets us all in there's no one ex that is put out that lets us all in we all have the wonderful privilege to come to the Lord in prayer both of these writers and these in the in these Gospels they heard, they heard Yeshua, their Messiah. They heard him say, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Did you hear those words? Wow. I started to ask myself, what have I made the house of the Lord into? Bethel means house of God. The house. Is this a house of song services and teaching? Yes. Is it a house of programs and administration, fellowship function? I'm not saying that these are wrong. But are these our focus? I'm not against having coffee hour Sunday morning. But is this place filled with people walking through and praying, preparing their hearts and their lives? I'm not saying fellowship is not important. I'm saying, I'm asking, simply asking myself, Lord, what have we made, Bethel? Is prayer a priority? We come on Wednesday nights to gather for prayer. And in all honesty, we have a few. Now, understand I am not putting anyone under guilt or condemnation because so many have lead busy lives. 
but are we filling the place with prayer? <clears throat> My job, I'm not demanding that we change everything and swing to an extreme. But this is not a place for selfish desires. You know, where it, if it doesn't fit, I'll just go somewhere else. We're here to worship one. We've done it well this morning. We worship all oh, the glory of his presence. If we don't have his presence, we have It's not my job to entertain you, but it is my job to equip you for every good work. Lord, help me to equip every person, whether they're watching online or whether they are in this house. Ephesians chapter 5 says, imitate God in everything you because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. If it's true that his house is to be a house of prayer, then why not learn the Why not be better equipped in your own personal lives and as a body to pray? To pray means we are simply communicating with God. So, this morning, we're going to I, 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 I'm not here to embarrass anyone, but what we are about to do may make some uncomfortable. I'm not here to make you comfortable, but to share with you a way to grow in prayer. First of all, what I'd like us to do and to those that are watching online, you're not going to get to see people in groups, but you can get the scriptures and you can practice praying the scriptures. I would like it if everyone in this place don't leave anyone by themselves. Get together in groups of, I would suggest, three or five. And I'm going to ask you to get you in your groups now, please. That'll mean you'll have to leave your seats. Don't leave anyone by themselves. Haldi kamantorabasho kuramasun. Ira pantropondi kerabasho kuramasun dihima. Halele pantorabasho riabasho kerabasun. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would facilitate this time in the name of Jesus. We are here to glorify you. Praise the Lord. Now, John is giving you a sheet that has some scripture on it. So please do not go to the next scripture until we instruct you. So uh, don't start praying yet, please. Don't start praying yet because there are things to, that we need to instruct for you. This is not just a uh, well, to, to pray about all the needs right now. 
I want us to learn how to pray the scripture. So, here's my ground rules. Search your own heart, first of all, individually. Search your own heart to see that there's, there, that there's no unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will stop up your prayer. It will. So that's something you can do as an individual. It doesn't take long. Second thing, there is no bad prayer, especially when it comes from your heart. Some may feel a little funny when it starts out. But uh, it comes from your heart. You'll be taking some of the scripture that has been given to you and that will help you to formulate the prayer, your prayer. It's with your lips coming from your heart as you read the scripture. Some of you will find a particular word that sticks out to you in that particular scripture. Then you will pray on that scripture. Okay? It, it, it's a uh, you don't have to formulate the words identically to what the scripture, uh, how the scripture reads it. It's only to be a basis for your thought and your prayer. Okay? Now, here's the other ground rule. Everyone gets an opportunity to pray, even as for a, on a particular scripture, even if it's only one line. If you have more than one line, that's fine. Okay? We're just going to go to one scripture at, at a time. It, everyone is to be a part of the conversation. We are all a part of the conversation with him. I have to tell you, I've never done this before in any service like this. But I felt by the Holy Spirit that everyone needed to enter into a time of prayer th this morning. So we're going to go to the first scripture and we have a PowerPoint that has the first scripture on it that'll be shown on the screen for those that are watching online. And if you uh, don't have a paper in front of you, the scripture will be on the screen. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. We'll change the scripture about every five minutes. Are you ready? Let me pray for you before we begin. I thank you, Lord, for this teaching moment. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you were sent. You have been placed in our hearts as, your, as our teacher. We come to you, Holy Spirit, to, and we invite you to teach us by your Spirit. We desire to grow in a manner that will mature us so that we become like Jesus. Please don't be by yourself, but please at least join with at least someone else so that you can grow with them. We are going to be learners together. And so, Father, we give this time to you. Help us. Help us in the name of Jesus. Now, we have people that have prayer tags. And those that have prayer tags, they can, they can go around and, and help if there are difficulties, okay? After a while, they'll, go, they'll, they'll be in their group, but then they can go and just kind of walk around to see if there are people that are having difficulty with this. I'll give you an example with 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2 to 7. Father, I thank you. You are my Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You have given me grace and given us grace and peace. All praise to you, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for you are a merciful Father and you are the source of all comfort. You see where I'm getting at. You allow the Holy Spirit to teach you through the scripture and as you speak it out, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, it'll help you grow. Let's begin now.
we can move to the next scripture now. We can move on to the next scripture now.
we can go on to the next scripture and that will be our last for this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Maybe we can all stand for the last song.
and prayer. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Right here in my heart. Right here in my heart. Let your kingdom come. Right here in my heart. Let the light of your countenance, because of your presence, let it rest on us as we go from this place into other places, not just for today, but for tomorrow and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.